catch that in route. Four, three, two, is it ready? And it's game time, baby. Connex Five here with the final match of Week Three in your 10th anniversary CTF Cup. We're gonna start off watching the blue flag here. This is gonna be AA Arkham Asylum's base. We'll see who they have on D here. You're gonna have Big V jumping in. Can't even see who he killed. He gets taken out instantly though. Big is gonna grab this flag. And uh, really, both their flag carriers are already getting just annihilated one by one. So good job by the blue defense of focusing down those players. Sometimes when you get out number three to two, a little bit hectic. And it looks like blue's defenders are essentially roaming. They're going to do a left-right split. It looks like you're going to have one over here in the shock hallway. And one probably up upright in that minigun lightning gun exit what that'll do is that'll allow, that'll allow them to hit people on the way in and wouldn't be surprised to see them dropping their translocators back so they can roam forward maybe help with power-ups in mid and then push back when their flag gets, gets grabbed red team right now committing three people to offense just getting three in there to completely overwhelm blue defense to try to get things rolling haven't really had much success Thaw's going to be out shock rifle doesn't have any health at all though so he's going to be facing rockets right here has a little bit of cover he doesn't have the ability to piston or really do anything to help himself out here. He's going to go down. Nobody ready to get the pickup. Let's follow the red flag now as Flick playing offense. Cast this moving. He's going to be trying to get out that low exit. You can expect to cut off. He's going to sit back and wait for cover to try to clear it out. He gets a double kill with that flag. So he will have a chance out to mid. Under Armour was spawned. I think it probably got taken by now. Meanwhile, you see him right in the same spot. PB pulling this across mid. Did that key bottleneck trying to get back into his base, though. You see important, all important pickups. Pretty much not going to be able to solo run this map. You're almost always going to have to relay the flag at some point. He's going to go down again, and you see blue team cutting them off, coming to their own base. Most flags go back, and uh, Amp was up. up and, Amp was just taken. Let's see who picked that up. It'll be Big V running offense on red team, so he's going to be able to try to create some cover opportunities if he has a teammate in here to grab the flag, which it doesn't look like he does. He's going to fight his way in, kill a couple of defenders. Oh, there's his teammates. Well, he already grabbed the flag, so uh, he's going to just try to Rambo his way out. He does have cover to distract the D. Oh, a nice mid-air rocket on the translocator. You're going to kill him instantly. we will get out to mid. Under Armour would, should be up soon. Looks like he gets grabbed. Couldn't tell if it was red or blue, so let's zoom out and see. He fights his way back into mid. All of the red team up there pushing him back into base. So you see them all covering their flag carrier. Let's go see where their kit, where their uh, flag is. The killer in red base. Being a little bit sneaky here. Just trying to give his team time to return that flag while he basically hides. But now Red Team's going to see where he is. Only five health. May drop this flag to a teammate. Looks like they're all over their flag area now. There he goes. He's passing the flag to a, a fresh... Fresh 100 health flag carrier. Uh, I could be mistaken. Is this in fact a blue base? May have been a blue base he was hiding. Just didn't have any cover around him. So that was a little strange, but... Either way, they've set up for a flag standoff here. See that pickup coming in. Killer not able to dodge up that ramp. May have saved him, though, as they were anticipating that move. I'm going to see him going up this lift. What he's doing right here is he's basically threatening the lift. So you'll notice that when he's down in this area, he can stay low or he can go up top really quickly. But what he does is he hangs out there and he makes the defense basically decide whether they want to commit stopping him at the top of the lift or fighting with the bottom. And uh, whichever way they go, he's going to go the other way. And that's going to help extend these standoffs and give us cover time to get some kills. <clears throat> PB, meanwhile, uh, watches that 50 armor stolen by his teammate. That allows him to go down to one lightning gun shot, but it gets picked up by Sta, who actually grabbed that 50, so ends up in the hands of armor. He goes down. Red team does get the pickup, but he blue just waiting for that return. Actually, red flag gets, gets dropped, but both teams now set up in a good configuration. Amp's going to be up in about five seconds, I believe. I'm going to go take a look at that, see if anybody can pick it up. Of course, while I'm out here, they'll probably have a big play to return the flag, so I don't want to spend too much time. But I think... <clears throat> anytime you get into a long, extended standoff scenario, power-ups in mid come into play big time, especially when you consider that a lot of times your defensive players won't be timing those power-ups. But once they're the ones that need to be grabbing them, uh, it's kind of interesting to see if they get out of sync with them. The team can control amps during standoffs. It could be a huge difference maker. Right, watch Killer now. Doing a good job. You see the blue team just surrounding that one red attacker. If red's going to be coming in one at a time. Blue needs to be taking them out. However, he does go down. Flag gets returned. That's going to be the first cap here for ETF as they go up one to nothing just about a quarter of the way into this match. 
a quick look through power ups. Didn't catch if anyone. I didn't see anyone come in on either side with that amp. So, oh, there it got taken just now. I can come up. Oh, I think I just passed him up. There we go. PB is going to grab that amp. Pretty weak, however. One will probably be up around the 14:40 mark. He's going to grab that flag instantly. Go down. Let's cover some defenders right now. We're watching. Uh, Oh. I'm not even uh, Exodia Sun. Uh, so maybe somebody can <laughs> give me a little bit of help on how to pronounce this this player's name. But anyway, this is going to be your shock side defender again. That left side's that left right split that Blue is doing. See what he's seeing for a minute. And from what I can tell, Blue has been doing a good job of coordinating their offensive attacks. I mean, three people come in all at once rather than one at a time makes it much harder for the defense to focus down one player at a time. He's going to go down. We're going to switch over. You know what? We're going to watch him try to catch up. <clears throat> you can see what it's like as a defender when you have very few weapons. You don't exactly know where the flag carrier is going, and you have to try to cut them off in mid. See him going straight to the front of their base, right to that big bottleneck. Not even trying to catch him in the middle of his route. You see the entire red team pushing out to cover. Their flag's going to be vulnerable, but it gets them. <clears throat> it does them no good, however, as blue team all drops back to get that return. Yeah, that was a pretty last second return. Odia Sun. Going back to defense. We're going to stick with him for another minute or so just to give you an idea. It looks like Amp should have been taken. <clears throat> Not sure who's coming in with it. Let me uh, double check it. I believe it was up, but we're just going to switch to the flag here. here. Watching PB. Pretty low on health. He's got a little bit of cover, however. Oh, that's Amp cover that Sta has, so that's going to do him a lot of good. It's cut off, however. But uh, that's going to allow Sta to one shot his way into mid. Gets him out into some cover areas in mid now. And this is going to be trouble for Blue because at already up one, has good cover set up in mid. He doesn't have a clear path to his flag yet. He's going to go into shock. Expect him to get cut off here. Red Team's going to need to seal off this base. He's going to have a couple of blue in between him and his flag stand. However, that flag goes down, gets returned. Good timing there. Sta able to put him up two to nothing. Nice patient run by Sta once he grabbed that flag. Didn't just speed run his way straight to his base because he knew that blue was all over the place waiting to cut him off. Hundred armor is going to be up. We're going to see this one taken for the first time. Big V will have that. Let's see if he does anything with it. <clears throat> he actually has 50 armor as well, so he's going to be looking about as stacked as you can get on this map. Not a whole lot of, of health vials or anything else. He's 150. You see him heading straight over, taking some damage on the way in. Does get one kill. He's going to try to double back and maybe confuse the defense. However, good prediction by the new defense does cut cut him off. Let's go, let's see. <clears throat> Look on amp, nothing coming up. Oh, you see amp already taken again by Sta. He's got a good timing on it. Let's just see if I can get a camera on him. And I did have a camera on him and missed it. There he goes. Sta going to be trying to just take out as much blue as possible. Fortunately, though, he wasn't around his flag carrier, so that's kind of the risk you take. When you have amp, you want to make the most of it by having weapons out. You don't do anything with the translocator out. Same time, sometimes you can fall behind the play and find yourself in no man's land. Kind of what happened to Saw there. <clears throat> Red team just having this blue flag constantly moving. I would be surprised if blue didn't adjust something here, as their flag has just been constantly off the stick. I would say if I was if I was them, maybe you drop one person to play on the stand, like maybe. Maybe you do a front to back split instead of left to right, so you can dedicate one person on the actual flag stand. Oof, chaos. There we go. I'll watch the blue flag for a bit. See, that's what blue is doing. They're sitting one person back on the flag. Now they're going to have uh, a little bit more of an anchor on the defense there. However, red team once again coming with three people coordinated. That's very difficult to defend when it's three on two in there. Let's go back to red team. You see, they got one on the stick. I think that's what Blue dropped back to doing. This allows you to kind of slow down those flag carriers. So even if someone doesn't get in and grab, grab the flag, you can kind of disrupt them a bit. Gives your team time to adjust. Blue coming in with three people. So it looks like both teams doing a good job of coordinating their offenses. Overloading the defenses there. Blue's going to switch back up, go high. He's still got 100 health. He's going to try to piss it out. Looks like he got hit right as he pissed in. So nothing really happening there. Looks going to cherry pick this, but uh, he's not really going to... Doesn't have any health, so maybe passing this flag to a teammate here. Or, uh. There we go. 
not making his way across the map, however, so they may run right into the enemy flag carriers that come out through this bottleneck. There you go, Rockets gets the kill. Doesn't get the return, though, so Blot's going to be moving across mid. He's all by himself. Red team, though, is going to opt to stick with their flag carrier for the most part and try to push him back into their base. Getting across mid, no cover comes off here. However, uh, both teams get the returns. Hundred armor is up. Looks like it got taken. Not sure who grabbed it. Let's go catch up with it. Well, whoever grabbed it doesn't have much left, so we're not going to worry too much about that. We're going to follow the flag runner here. As Big B's getting across mid, runs across the other other enemy flag carrier. Going to be weak in mid. Takes that lift jump. Don't think he wanted to do that. I think he maybe wanted to go high into that li link gun. Excuse me, lightning gun. Oh, just a last second grab there. Blue team though, able to get that return. So a nice move there by I believe Baza, trying to. Give his team a few more seconds, maybe try to trick the enemy flag carrier into get, getting himself into a vulnerable position. But blue team all over their flag. They, they What they did there is they covered their flag carrier all the way back into the base. They followed through. They didn't just let him go once they got to their entrance. Smart move, good capture the flag. And uh, allows them to get back within one point here. Just about the halfway point of this map. Still really anyone's game, although of course having one cap advantage... Put you in a good or put it you in a good position in a map with as many bottlenecks as this. Play a little bit more defensive if you want to. Really slow the game down. I want to follow a defender here. Who else is who's defending on red? Definitely not Star or Big V. Them and PB, that would be your offense. So come on, give me anyone else on red. There we go. Combo's coming in. Blue crossing mid. Leave position. However, all their cover was out of position. Never got stuck behind the flag carrier, didn't allow them to get in a place to pick up the flag. And again, on this map, you have to anticipate requiring pickups. You're going to have to relay this flag to get it home most of the time. Positioning all that much more important in a map like this. Flick's going to be out to mid. You see, IMW got the bit of a lucky spawn there. He spawned in front of the flag carrier with rockets right there. He would have been able to cut him off. Then gets dropped on that lift. They're going to go ahead and return that. Some people might like to leave the flag there. Is that for... A good amount of time, the enemy flag or the enemy uh, offensives come in and grab it in a weird spot. They opt to return it, sets up their defense in a more comfortable position. Follow him now, as it looks like this is the kind of like the last third of the match. This is the point where things might get a little desynced as far as teams losing track of power ups, teams getting out of coordination with their offense. And this is where it's really gonna. I mean, this is where a teams uh, coordination and teamwork can really come into play. Um, is how well can you stay organized and communicate once you don't have your uh, timing of all the power-ups and once you don't just naturally come into the enemy flag or enemy uh, base in sync. But as you see there, red able to outrun the blue defense there and uh, give them a two-cap lead. It's going to be problematic for the blue team. You can see slight advantage of the nets to red team. I don't think that's been a huge factor here. Blue team just hasn't been able to get their flag, a red flag I should say, back into their base. They've had the flag moving a decent amount. Although, honestly, blue flag has been just constantly off the stick. However, when you're down by two, you can't really afford to play extra defensively, so blue doesn't have the luxury of dropping another player back and try to slow down their flag movement. They're getting the double kill, running, running offense with a minigun. Running through that 100 armor, running around it. It's back, pistons towards his base, nobody there for the pickup. I think that's a problem that we're seeing for the blue team. A lack of pickups whenever they do drop this flag. baza has got amp in mid, we're gonna follow him for a bit. Dropped his translocator back. He maybe switched to defense? Thought he was playing offense, could be wrong. Yes, I was wrong, because IMW and Baza are playing defense. So you know, we'll watch Baza for a minute. <clears throat> you see that amp shot coming in. Last shot he had on him. And you see, problem problematic from the blue team. Their offense is running in one at a time, just allowing red defenders to just double team them each individually. Uh, you know, that's something that both teams did a good job of early on in the game. That's what I talk about. When you get later on in these matches, are you going to be able to keep your coordination? Sometimes that means not rushing the base as quickly as possible. Sometimes you have to be patient, wait a few seconds. That could be a big, uh, ha have a big effect on how well you can get this flags moving. <clears throat> Baza doing a good job watching for the flag here, watching for that flag halo, uh, not getting juked out there.
the IMW up there, and that's what you want them to do whenever you have a Ford Defender like that. Basically, their job isn't so much to get kills, it's just to do as much damage as possible to the enemy attackers as they come in. You saw them up there at the Lightning Gun Hallway getting absolutely annihilated, but still doing damage to the process, disrupting their flow, just outputting damage, and that's that's all you have to do as a Ford Defender, because you're going to be able to respawn by the time they grab the flag, and you'll get a second chance, and so... But that allows Baza to do is sit back there, and he's fighting people, yeah, they three on one, two on one, but they're going to have half health, and that really makes his job a lot easier. Sta here, just being patient, knows the entire fight is out and mid, he's going to allow his team to get up there and get that return before moving forward. Blue team not able to locate him in time. They do get that return, but not before that flag gets stopped. And uh, we're going to try to watch this red flag a bit, because this is the one that needs to get moving. We want to see them have a chance at extending this map. Flick trying to hit a flag primary here, does hit a ball. He's, uh, oh, there we go, finally gets some cover. Gonna be heading out shock, however, you can definitely expect a couple people out front there to cut him off. There they are. Gonna try to fight their way, just bull rush their way through mid. Cover doing a good job, comboing behind him, he misses his piston, but he's gonna get in his front door. This is dangerous for red. However, they do have the flag moving, they're gonna cross paths here. Both flag carriers shooting at each other, both are gonna go up high, they're gonna have another chance to kill each other. Oh, red's flag carrier gets the kill, and cover gets the return. That was a huge exchange right there, as blue finally got that flag all the way back in their map. <clears throat> and they let, let their flag carry go one on one with enemy flag carry. That was a huge mistake. Cost them a very good scoring opportunity that would have pulled them within one. And now Red on the rebound is back in their base in position to cap. He can piss into his stand if he wants to. Actually gets bounced by a flag ball right back to his stand. The rebound cap puts him up by three. And that may be the one that ends it. Not out of the realm of possibility here, but uh, the way Red Team has been keeping their flag under control, it'd be very, very difficult for Blue to get anything happen, make anything happen here. They're pretty much going to have to pull. A defender and play four offense at this point. Maybe push a defender out to mid. Maybe you play two offense and two mid. <clears throat> right now, Blue is all on cover, which is what they need to be doing. However, this is going to allow V to basically just waltz his way across the map as the Blue team is entirely, uh, even with even with their entire team on cover, their flag gets returned. Big V's just going to waltz back into his base. He can piss into his stand if he wants to, but I think he's going to be patient. Maybe just try to run out the clock. Oh, now he's looking at that piston, it gets disrupted, but a teammate there for a pickup. A nice denial by Blue, but running out of time. It's two and a half minutes to go, they need to pull three across the map. Right now, though, here's a tricky situation. Blue team knows that Red is entirely in their base. Blot had the flag and could have outrun the Red defenders if he was uh, able to hit a bunch of trick jumps. However, that's the difference between offensive styles. If you're not a speedrunner, you're not going to be able to do that. Blue, though, does relay their flag in the base. Good pickup, finally. Cover going to be... Trying to catch up to him, they get one more kill. Enemy flag here once again in their base. Blot jumps up to a stand red all over him. Looks like they missed that pickup, so Blue doing a good job securing this flag. They need to get this return in cap. He's waiting, pissing to a stick. Return happens, they do get that time return. Two minutes to go, down by two. Blue needs to get moving though, as they are going to be running out of time. And uh, red base is completely empty right now. Blot's going to get another grab here. This could be problematic for red team. I'm not sure why their defense... Well, there they go. Clutch kill there by IMW. PB is not the one we want to watch. We need to watch... Well, red flag. But red flag not going anywhere right now. <clears throat> in fact, neither is blue flag. So let's go in this red base. Running out of time. A minute and a half. Just about... Just about hitting that threshold of mathematical impossibility here. You can cap sort of fast on this map. Problem is, there's so much disruption coming in from all sides. Killer trying to get out to mid. If Killer gets out to mid, he he is very comfortable pissing across the map. You can guarantee he knows all of the speed runs. So it's dangerous if he can get out to mid. However, you can see Red Team there just completely collapsing on him, not letting him get any room to roam. <clears throat> Lot's going to get out to mid. Let's see what he can do here. Is he's got red team all around him. Only 49 seconds left. He goes down. Nobody there for the pickup, and I think that's going to be the uh, curtain call. And red team's going to take this first map, probably 4 to 2. I'm going to flip through some of the stats as we watch this flag carrier running around. The sense I got, I, di I didn't get the sense that the, that the uh, power ups played a huge factor. I mean, he saw Blight getting six of those hundred armors, doing a good job but not able to come across with uh, enough caps. Caps and Hunter is really pretty spread out, Ten. both amongst players and teams. I don't think Eight. I don't think any of them really played a huge role. I don't think it, there was any uh, flag runs that were completely dominated by Amp or anything. 
That'll be map one going to DTF. Team is the winner. And uh, really, I think it just came down came down to them able to group up around their flag carriers and get those flags into their base. I mean, they actually got the flag moving a lot more than blue, but more than that, they were able to convert and get those get those seals coming back into their base. That's really the hard part of this map. They say the front of those bases is key. That's the difference in the map here. We'll see Arcanostra coming up next, and again, a map very much uh, key towards the European crowd, which AA has a few more players. Be familiar with that map. We'll see if that plays a role as they get this started. One minute remains. Map 2 Arcanastre. Like I said, I'll be curious to see what lineup ETF uses, being a, uh, I guess, mostly North American team in this cup. This is a very, uh, this is very much a map that North Americans aren't going to be very familiar with. It was never really played in the community. Interesting to see what lineup they throw in there. However, they did win Map 1. We just saw them take Virility, and uh, Map 3 would be Vault City, which is going to be a turnaround. It's going to be a map that North Americans are going to be a little bit more familiar with, the European crowd, so... You gotta figure they're in good position. You're feeling pretty good if you're DTF. You won the map you're, you're familiar with. You may, even if you lose this other map, you're gonna have a chance to go into the third map, which you've gotta feel pretty comfortable on. <clears throat> and I gotta admit, I'm not actually very familiar... And this song is loud. <laughs> I, I gotta say, I'm not really familiar with this map from what I've seen, what I've played. It's very linear. It's something where you've got essentially a giant, um, you know, rectangular linear map with just a ton of crossover points where you can go high to low, low to high, left to right, right to left. And it's basically just a drag race. Once the flag carrier grabs the flag, you kind of know where they're going. It's just a matter of whether they're going to choose left, right, high, low. It's just big sort of uh, intertwining, like, double helixy Mobius strip of a map. However, despite being essentially linear, it does have a lot of ways to break line of sight. And I think that's what's important. Because anytime you have a big, you know, a map where I essentially start off with a giant rectangular room, you really have to be careful about having wide open areas so you can shoot across the map. And uh, that's one thing that this map definitely avoids. I think probably the biggest room is the flag room here. You can see four different entry points. So it's fairly middle ground as far as the flag grabs go. It's, it's not exactly hidden, but it's not super exposed. You're going to get a lot of shots coming in. 
getting an opportunity to damage flag here is as they come in before they grab the flag, put it that way. I am curious how defenders are going to play this map, though. If they're going to be splitting up, like, left and right, maybe have, you know, one on each side trying to catch people on the way in. They decide to send someone to roam up front, almost like we saw on uh, Virility there, where you maybe put someone up front to try to roam around and catch people on the way in and cut them off, maybe have someone else back in the flag room. A few different ways to play this map. We'll see what each team decides to do. Like, players are getting in and getting ready. I'm not mistaken, I believe there are two amps in this map too, right? Each team has one, yep, right up above their flag room. Amps up here, which is an inter interesting position because it pushes the defense out of the flag room, but it's usually still going to be theirs to control. However, enemy attackers can come in and sweep through it on their natural route in, which means that, uh, again, you might decide to put a defender up here to help sort of defend that area and just basically enforce your will. Um, and not allow the enemy attackers to get comfortable coming in through here every time checking that amp. You definitely don't want to lose track of that. Especially with two amps in a map, kind of like if you've ever seen Grindle Keep. If the team can get both amps going simultaneously, that becomes big trouble for the other team. Essentially like having two more players shooting at you, at least as far as damage output. That said, we do have... Oh, come on. Trying to get to the 100 armor. I'm pretty sure I'm inside the map right now. Ah! Was actually fixed in UT Comp CTF. Uh, however, we're not using that, so I get to fight with it for a bit. I'm definitely on the 100 armor base. Uh, however, I'm inside the floor of the map, so that's not going to do you any good. I believe it's just low in the air. I think this is it right here. Low mid in the map, so you'll notice this is kind of like a virility. It's going to be your natural flag running route. Once again, you want to keep an eye on whether flag runners are going to be able to have the presence to either drop down or come over or, you know, change their route, cross over this in the middle of their run. That could be a huge uh, play if they're able to do that. So who do we got for DTF? It looks like we've got, well... Baza, Big V, PB, INW all going to return from the last game. I'm not sure who Cry is. Is that Cryensen or something? I believe the, uh, is his full name, if I'm not mistaken? Anyway, I'll call him Cry. He's going to be coming in here. Uh, not a surprising move, bringing in another European player. So now only two North American players in the roster for this map for DTF. They're going to be entirely European except for Killer on AA. So a smart move by DTF, maybe putting the players that are most familiar with the map on here. As opposed to maybe perhaps their hypothetical starting lineup for, uh, you know, an average map like, say, Grindel. Our players are ready to go. Eight, seven, the 10th eight, anniversary CTF Draft five, Cup, week three, the final match three, of group stages. Two. One. And it's game time, baby. Con X5 here, and we're going to show you a little bit of, uh, ah, come on. A little bit of me switching around randomly. You know what, let's just go straight to the flags. I'm not sure. We're going to see, yep, early grab here. Players not going for the power-ups. They're going to go ahead and maybe try to grab this, perhaps pick up the 100 armor en route. Looks going to run out there. Headshot coming in from the cover there. Looks going to get out to this 100 armor area. He might be able to pick this up if he can get there in time. Instead, he's going to go in high to his base. Let's see what he's seeing. But what he's seen is a whole bunch of red team behind him, so good job. Blue cover is absolutely dominant on this flag run so far. They're going to sneak all the way across. 50 armor's up there. Does get the pickup. There's going to be trouble, though. Another good cover kill. So blue team right now doing a good job of locating their flag carriers, getting back there in time. He's going to piss his way back to flag. Just an absolutely textbook job by blue team there. AA coming up big early on, taking the lead for the first time in this match. Some great cover. Uh, you know, that's something they're going to need to continue to do. I think that was the problem they had last game. They just couldn't coordinate their cover. Really get those flags pushed across. Uh, you know, convert those flag runs. Baza looks like he's playing some offense this time rather than defense. The uh, Twitch chat seemed to be a little bit surprised to see him on D last game on Virility. We'll see him running this flag. Oh, drops right back down on the defender. No cover coming out here. He's going to go down quickly. Turn armor should be up. Let's go take a look at it. Oh, somebody took it. I <laughs> can't tell who. 
We'll just follow Killer here, see if he can get some more cover. Oh, Rux running to some rockets. Nice pickup, though. The blue already picking up the flag better and covering better than they did on Virility. So off to a much better start as far as coordination and teamwork goes. Amps are going to be coming up soon. Let's go ahead and hop in on Red Amp. See if Killer comes in here trying to steal. Looks like he might get it. That would be a huge play if he does. Looks like it was delayed a bit, however. He's actually going to have to come off. Maybe try to get some pressure uh, cutting off the flag here. And there we go. Amps up right there. Killer did pick it up. Let's watch him and see if he decides to go cut off the enemy flag carry with it. Looks like that's what he's doing. The blue team dropped everyone back to try to contain that flag run. And uh, did he get telefragged there? Killer gets telefragged by Baza. Losing that amp. So that was a big play by Baza whether he knows it or not. Killer though, right on top of the power-ups. Gets that 100 armor. We're going to see him probably try to get a grab. Waiting for his cover to get in and distract the defense. He's got red all around him, however. Down to 13 armor from that. And again, you see that wide open flag room going to allow hit scan to dominate when you're trying to get to the flag. Once you get out of that base, though, I think that's when you'll see a lot of rockets and flag coming into play. Let's we'll see Hector playing some defenses. Time. Double kill with flag. And you see that 50 armor down low, amp up top. So you have a couple of uh, sort of swing power ups. You can send those to your offense or your defense, supposed to amp into 50. Some tricky flag running there. Coming out by Baza. Gets him out to the left side. Another kill with Rockets. He's going to be out. Good cover by the red team. What we saw from the first flag run on blue. Everybody grouped up together. Oh, he jumps right into the enemy defender instead of staying with the cover. Dangerous move by Baza. Works out. The double kill on the flag by Rockets. Oh, and red not able to get the pick up there. Perhaps one pick up away from tying it up. Doesn't work out for him. Amp, it sounded like it got taken on... One side or another. Anyway, we're going to watch the flag here. Killer's got this flag. A little bit of armor. Not a whole lot. He's going to take a lightning. Oh, he's lucky he missed that piston. He would have gone down. Maybe missed it on purpose. There was that amp that we heard. IMW taking that one. Allowing him to sneak in there and get that solo flag return. These flags are moving non-stop. It's going to be a bit hectic. Oz is going to be going out low. Watch from his perspective as he's just seeing blue swarming around him. Takes one out with the rockets. Gets a double kill with the rockets. Good prediction there by Baza. Able to use the flight time of the rockets at his advantage. To his advantage, rather. Lick with a nice pickup. Got 50 armor zone. He can get himself back to base. He can piston straight to his stand if he wants to. Ops to just try to cover himself with the rockets. Completely clear. Red team not able to outrun him to base. And increase their lead up by two now. I've been into this game, and uh, so far it's been all AA. You can't really say it's been necessarily due to having North American uh, players on DTF. They've only got one more than blue, so everyone's going to be out even overall as far as their experience on this map. Crypto grabbing this flag. Oh, misses that piston. Oh, I think he was trying to go up top. I'm not sure what his plan was there. See right now he's got... He hears all kinds of explosions going on around him. Blue team doing a good job covering their flag here. Let's get a good kick. You, you see the... Uh, the double back there by Flick. Good anticipation knowing that Bossa was going to be cutting him off with the Rockets. So Flick now down to 20 health. Might want to pass this flag if they get one or two more kills. He's got red all over him though. He's going to need somebody to come up quick. He's going to dive into the flag saying nobody there to get the pickup. Blue team just caught out of position there. It should have been 3 to nothing. Not able to cover their flag carrier all the way to the stick like I talked about in Virility. That's what you got to do. You can't release your flag carrier. You got to have somebody on him all the way to the base. That team did a good job cutting them off, swarming their base, and getting that last second return. Denial. Boss is going to grab this flag now. Just rockets and flak and dock just coming out all over the place. Just a huge scrum every time someone grabs a flag. So uh, let me try to cover a defender here if I can. Who should we cover? Covered Hector already. We'll watch... Uh, Guy whose name I can't pronounce correctly. Cody Sin. He's gonna be on offense. Well, for the sake of not just bringing you constant, non-stop camera changing chaos, we're gonna watch this guy for a little bit. I really can't tell if he's playing. It looks like he's making his way towards. It. Okay, who's gonna be your attacker now? And uh, right now, red team doesn't seem to know where he's going with the flag. A nice. Ninja run to get himself out to mid and good cover once again coming out by blue. I'm gonna switch up to the third person camera so you can see his cover all around him, clearing the path behind him. And uh, good job, Exodia said here. What he's doing is basically hurting the red team into his cover. That's one thing you can do on kind of a complex map like this. 
Looks like his cover grab. Man, they go down, but they're going to wait for this return. He's going to be able to piss. Oh, he gets stomped on, which disrupts his piss, and they kill him right on the flag stand and get the return. Bit of a ridiculous but lucky series of events for DTF there that's going to keep him in the game. It's not even a halfway point down by two. Cry has his flag moving, but he's down to four health. He's going to need a pickup. That happens. PB gets the pickup, moving towards his own base. 100 armor's not up. He needs someone else to get up close to him. There it is. Bowser right on top. He's down to 9 health. They do get this return. He can't piss in the base, so he's down to 10 health. They need to get all the way back to their base and clear this flag stand. Big combo comes out. Nice combo there by Cry. Denies Blue the opportunity to get that grab. So 2-1 to one now. Not even halfway through the game. DTF looking a lot better. Blue's, though, still in good position running this flag. And they still have their cover set up. They're staying in sync very well. Both flags have been moving fairly effectively. Oh, blue team getting caught by an ambush by the red team, leaving everybody out mid. No pickup there. Hector was in position. Missed it, though. Blue team moving their defense up smart, but uh, couldn't quite get the pickup. And I'm trying to find a red defender here. Who can I find? I believe IMW is going to be playing defense. See him. That shock tape right in his flag stand. And I'm curious to see, again, what they're doing. If it's going to be a front-to-back split, left-to-right split. Oh, IMW went up for his amp. It was taken. It looks like a uh, teammate may have taken it. That Cry may have grabbed that amp. Oh, almost perfectly times that combo. Just misses it. That just flick. A little bit frustrated there in the corner. But uh, IMW goes down. His flag's going to be moving. Good job locating it through mid there. But he's going to be moving again. So let's stay with IMW. He tries to catch up. I'm curious what it looks like from a defender's perspective. Trying to jump through all of these bottlenecks. Good rockets coming in there. There's a lot of damage. However, you're going to see still 100 health in the Flag Runner. Must have had some armor. I don't think there's really any health vials in this map. So we're going to see Blue set up for this Flag Standoff. Red's going to try to get up close and personal. They may have had three on return for Red Team. They really want this Flag back to try to tie this up. Chasing him up. They don't get that return. Nice pick up there by Killer. He's going to be running all the way out to mid, though. So even if their team gets this return, he's going to be extremely out of position. Let's go check on the red flag here. They actually pass that flag. They're in good position. Oh, return comes in. Killer getting caught out of position. Red able to tie the game up now. Just about halfway point. Back to square one. And uh, now we're going to see if these amps can come into play. Because this is around the, around the point of the map when those amps start getting out of sync. And people don't necessarily have natural timing on it. It's going to be running this flag. Jumping rares and amp right there. He doesn't want to see that. IMW is going to be on him with amp, rockets, and lightning gun. Red all over him, really. He's going to be watching Cry now. The other defender for Red Team. Still not sure if they have a discrete split on their defense. It looks like their flag has been moving so much. They're kind of just roaming around and, and really just improvising. Um, looks like with a within an exposed flag like this, it seems like that's kind of what they pretty much have to do because they've just been getting overloaded every time an enemy team just jumps in with three players, gets this flag running, and you're just constantly having to cut off. And going down to the flag there, you can expect that grab to happen. I don't know how healthy Flick's going to be with that flag. Runs right into his flag. And a nice cut off there. Blue still has two in their flag room, though. I expect Cry here to try to get another cut off, get in the base. Big flag primary is coming out, but that shield going to block most of it. Dude, doubling back. Not really going anywhere, though. So Red doing a good job of corralling. You see them dropping back a player. Bottling up that flag run before it goes anywhere. <clears throat> Looks like both, both defenders for Red are basically just falling back to the flag room. And I think the reason the, these flag rooms are so busy, now that I think about it, is because of the fact it's so quick to get across the map. And even once you die, you can get right back into the enemy base and constantly put pressure on it. Now, that's something you're going to see with a lot of these linear, like, rectangular, sh you know, straight line kind of maps. I heard an amp taken. He's trying to catch up to it. Said, let's just follow Bosses. He's got the flag. He's going to go down. Well, there's a quick quick return there. Killer's got it now. For blue team, he's completely surrounded, though. So you expect him to go down quickly. There's three right on top of him. And just like that, both flags going to be back in base. Why haven't we followed on defense here? I haven't followed tight. He's going to be playing defense now. Um, or at least chasing that flag carry. There you go. Falling back on the defense. 
And it looks like Blue basically doing the same thing, throwing two people in the flag, just trying to do as much damage as possible. Because anytime the enemy team drops three people right on your flag, it looks like you're pretty much going to give up at least some amount of a run. And bouncing him around, nice flag ball there, nobody around for the pickup. He's going to go ahead and suicide back to base, so what that'll do is allow him to reset his health, giving up his weapons, but it does allow him to get back up to 100 health, grabs a weapon. Nice lightning gun shot, right into the back. Dude won't block that. Another rocket coming in. He may be able to take him out here. Oh, looks like uh, Baza had some armor there. That's going to be problematic because he's still got 46 health. He's probably taking a couple rockets with his lightning gun. Gets cut off. That flag not returned. Pick up by Poison Bagels. He's another teammate to come in and get this grab. Doesn't happen. That's going to get returned. Almost a nice relay there by Red Team, though. They've yet to take the lead in this map. They are able to tie it up. Look, going to be running with Amp, trying to cover himself down to 8 health. That's a tricky situation because you don't want to have your shield run out when you're running with an amp. That allows you to be much more vulnerable. Killer's going to run with that minigun that he likes to do. Doesn't really get him very far. Ooh, I'm going to catch my breath and pop up stats for a bit. <clears throat> there you go, Flick. Give me a second. <laughs> you see him being a little sneaky. Covers out front, left and right. It looks like his cover is basically just giving him an idea of what's clear. He's going to let the defenders get in front of him, get confused. And Blue right now is just kind of patiently pushing their way across the map. Going to have to fight their way through this middle area. Oh, and Cry sneaks in behind. Blue team there. All of their cover was in front of the flag carrier. Nobody covering behind. Cry sneaks in, gets that solo return. Meanwhile, their flag runner is going to be heading back to their base left side. Their flag is moving through mid. You can see it over there. Question for the red team. Do you cover your flag carrier all the way back to base, or do you send someone off to cut off that flag carrier? It looks like they're going to cover him all the way back. It's set up for a flag standoff here. Oh, he runs right into Hector, however. He's going to be backing off, and he's got... Getting flanked by blue, red's going to drop back and maybe clear their base. Flag goes down, does anyone get, to, get this pickup? They do not. That gets returned, Exodia signed out with a chance. Double kill on the flag, and that gets the return. Nice return there by IMW. Not sure if he got that combo kill or just the return, but either way, good coordination there. Because uh, they were one piston there away from capping that flag and taking the lead. Flick sneaks his way across mid, however gets cut off by two red, needs some cover right about now. Nobody there to pick up this flag. We're seeing these offenses get a little bit out of sync now. These flag carriers are grabbing this flag, getting it in the mid, and getting caught out all alone. Not what you want to see, as we saw both teams doing a good job of coordinating their cover. And that looks like that's what made the difference early on in the map. You see Amp cover coming in for PB. He's going to get that return. They're going to push him across the map. He can piston to his base now. He has, oh, down to one health. He can't piston. Nobody catches up, though. So great cover by Red Team that time, right as I was lamenting their lack of coordinated cover. They uh, proved me wrong right there. Take the lead for the first time in this map. Now AA is going to be in tricky positions. They need to fight their way back with only five minutes to go. But, however, does get that flag moving. No cover once again. So let's go back and uh, let's watch this red flag and see if Blue can get anything going with it. Dropping two in on the get base. One goes down instantly. Going to leave a two on one for the defenders. That's going to benefit them every single time. Blue, you see Blue with a steady stream of players jumping into red base, but they're not coming in coordinated, and so they're getting double teamed, 2 on one that focus fire. They're going to be able to take one down and go right back to Flick and just focus him down 2 on one Good job by red team of uh, not getting flustered. Oh, there's a headshot by Flick. That's going to push him out to mid. IMW, though, they're there for the cutoff. And get that return, finally does. The killer grabbed red amp. Keep an eye on that. These last few minutes, you're going to have uh, three or four more amps coming up. On that, and keep it away from the red team and use it for his own cover. That could be huge. Trying to give him a chance to tie this game back up. Amp cover coming through. Blue, a good run here. Pushing across mid. They might want to push up their defenders, however. You can expect red team. It looks like that's what they're doing. Red team is definitely going to fall back. But Blue needs to cover this flag all the way back in the base. There's nobody around their flag here right now. They got that return, but he's going to go down to one more shot. Diving to the flag stand. Doesn't get the kill. Both people fighting over the stand. Flag goes down to red. Not able to get that return. One step away from that return. There's a tie game. The blue team now answering back with another great coordinated cover uh, display. Even pushing up their defenders to make sure they got that flag all the way back in that entrance. Even making a big difference there. So a tie game. And Baza now moving this flag across mid. I'm not sure where enemy flag carrier is. They're going to get that pickup. Taking a ton of damage, you're going to expect Blue to cut him off in this room. Big combo comes in, able to avoid it, he does go down, a nice pickup there. 
Blue team, though, absolutely swarming. Where's their flag carrier? It looks like he's kind of all alone. Killer just solo running this world. His teammates got that return. He's just begging for cover. Nothing happening. Go check these power ups just real quick, see if anything's spawning. Looks like nothing really happening. So, red flag moving. We're going to watch Exodia Sun. It looks like he has 100 armor, 140 health. He's going to be in great position. Red team doesn't seem to know where he is. They finally found him. He's already halfway across the map. He can piss and he can go up high. Oh, he gets comboed up high. Oh, it doesn't, doesn't make that work. I thought for a second he was going to convert that to a high route. That would have been huge. Doesn't quite happen. And both flags are going to be reset, I believe. Oh, Big B's going to grab this flag. He's actually got amp cover for himself, but... Goes down really weak. We're going to finally bottle that one up. So Exodia Sun, once again, smart by Exodia Every time he grabs this flag, it seems like he has over 100 health. There's a few vials in this map. But sometimes they can really add up if you can pick up a couple sets of them. Even an extra 40 to 50 health is the difference between taking one more shot. I mean, how many denials have we seen in this map already? Imagine if you can take one more shot when you're diving to that flag stand. Uh, make a big difference. Bazza moving his flag. And it looks like some of these uh, flag carriers now are finally disrupting these defenses. They're grabbing Solo. It looks like he's doing a speed run across the map. He may be able to piss himself back to his stand. I don't think Blue's in front of him. Oh, they get a last second grab. They go down, though. He's going to be on his stick. And Bazza with the speed run puts his team up by one with two minutes to go. Saw the entire blue team behind him, knew that he could piss his way across the map and outrun him. Smart move by Baza. Basically had to run flag to flag backwards on that map. And that's that experience that I talked about. I'm not sure if some of these North American flag runners like Safe Killer are familiar enough with this map to be able to do that. We're now back in a tough position. See them all over their flag here doing a good job of covering. This is how they've capped all of their points so far. Flick dropping back down to enemy flag here. Everybody's going to be in one spot. He needs some cover right now. Down to 9 health. Has many guns on him. He's probably going to go down here. Does anyone get this pickup? No, his cover's all on return. Or something. I think they may just be uh, pushing forward to the enemy base. Hector, Defender's going to grab this flag. Minute and a half to go. Blue team needs to just focus entirely on getting this red flag into their base. Worry about getting into a flag standoff position. Getting this return later. But right now, Hector, nobody sees him. Red team finally catches up with him, but he's already heading back into his base. Blue team just needs to collapse in their base right now. So he's got this flag... Looks like Red Flag Carrier has Amp. It's not really going to do him so much good, though. Killer grabbing that health. Piston up top. Oh, a nice cut off there by Baza. Saw Killer going for that piston up to that high Amp area. Big V now is going to be covering himself with Amp. He doesn't need to cap here. All he needs to do is stay alive. He may decide to sit back, grab some vials. Now he's actually going to push into his own base. Dangerous move, though, is that makes him predictable. Baza, though, with a great pickup. Baza's had a huge game as far as clutch pickups and returns and shots. Big V is going to pick it his own. Pick up of a pickup. Grabs himself another cap, and that's going to put it away. 5-3 to three by DTF. They're going to win this match two maps to zero. And I actually am not clear on the entire ultimate implications of the outcome of this game, but I know this was the last group stage match, and so this will have an effect on who plays who, maybe even who makes it to the playoffs. I'm going to flip through stats here. Red team pulling another one across in garbage time. Ultimately, though, it was basically a tie game until the last couple minutes. Red able to pull that... Big speed run across by Baza, I think, really was the difference maker. Once again, just like really, it looks like power-ups are pretty much evenly distributed. I don't think that played a huge role. And uh, and again, like really, it came down to, for the most part, which team could coordinate their best cover runs, except for that Baza run. Coming up huge with that clutch speed run that really broke things wide open. There you have it, DTF going to win 2 to nothing. And I'm not sure if we're going to have some more matches today. I'm going to stick around and uh, stay live for a little while until I find out.